the beginning of each day, you'll start by placing yourself on duty. So start by tapping the login button. Once on the login page, you'll need to tap the keyboard icon so you can type in your driver ID and password. Make sure to select active before tapping the OK button. If the performance monitoring alert appears, select yes. You'll be taken to the login screen. Tap the home icon in the upper left hand corner of the screen and tap the hours of service button. On the hours of service screen, tap the remarks button. On the remarks screen, select the drop down menu on the left and select pre-trip and tap OK. You'll need to allow 15 minutes minimum to complete the pre-trip at the beginning of every single shift. Not registering that you've done a pre-trip will show up on your monthly reports. So now you're on duty. There's where you'll find your beginning time. That has to be carried over onto your paper pre-trip inspection report so that you have the license number and unit number and all the details to your tractor and location and the trailer that you're hooking up to as well. Then in the load tab, this will be a new load, so tap the new load button. Then tap the keyboard icon so you can enter all the load details starting with the load ID. In the bill of lading field, you need to enter the bill of lading number. Then you'll enter a space before typing the seal number. In the trailer and license plate, go in the trailer field with a space between them. Once you're finished entering the information, tap the status tab. Now this is your electronic pre-trip inspection report. Now that you're officially on duty, let's start the pre-trip inspection. Some trucks are equipped with a light cycler that will make it much easier to check the lights without climbing in and out of the truck. The first thing I always do after climbing out of the cab is unhook the driver's side hood latch before moving to the front of the truck. Stand back a good distance from the truck and, starting at the roof, work your way down, looking for anything cracked or damaged. Check your clearance lights across the top, making sure they're all working and functioning, that they're all clean and clear. Look at the windshield, checking for any cracks, damage, stone chips. Anything larger than three quarters of an inch or in your line of sight as you're driving the truck puts it out of service. You cannot have any obstructions in your line of sight. Look at the hood. Look at the grill. Look at the mirrors. Look at the headlights. Check the function of your headlights, your low beams, your turn signals, your high beams. And at the bottom, check the fog lights. Next, check the highway utility tags for the New York inspection sticker. Make sure the license plate is visible and it's up to date. Ensure the airflow through the radiator grill isn't obstructed by ice, snow, leaves, what have you. Do an overall visual inspection to make sure between your last shift and today, nobody struck and cracked or damaged any part of the vehicle. After checking the front of the truck, go to the passenger side and unlatch and lift the hood. Just like at the front, you're going to start at the top and work your way down. So from the top of the engine, I've got the air cleaner. We use a variety of engines, so I'll be very general about what you should be looking for. The main thing you're looking for is to ensure all parts are solidly in place. There are no leaks, nothing's broken, nothing's damaged, nothing's leaking. You're looking at the radiator, the hoses, nothing's leaking, everything is solid. You're checking to make sure all the clamps are in place. They're not loose and there's no damage. You're checking the power steering fluid to make sure it's up to the minimum cold level. You're looking at all the different engine components. Steering cannot have more than 10% play. You're checking all the fluid levels. Again, the power steering, the engine oil. You're checking your fuel filter, making sure it's flowing freely and there's no blockage. You're looking at all the wiring, making sure that none are frayed or broken. You're checking the frame. Make sure there's no unmanufactured holes. The shock towers to make sure they're solid, not leaking. There's no marks on them, no damage. You're looking at the springs, making sure the U-bolts are in place. There are no missing nuts, no cracks, no loose or missing parts. 
You're checking the leaf springs to make sure they're intact and all the connection points to make sure everything's solid. There's no missing parts, no unmanufactured holes. The steering linkage. Look to make sure everything's tight, connected, solid, no cracks, no damage. Make sure the cotter pins in the brake chambers are solid. No audible air coming from the air hoses. No scuff marks, no leaks, no damage. For the tires, you're going to check the back of the tire. Make sure there are no cracks, bulges, or cuts. The rim isn't bent. There's no welds and that the brake chamber is solid. You're making sure the tread is wearing evenly. In the steer tires, you cannot have less than 4 30 seconds of an inch tread wear. You're looking for flat spots. Is the tire wearing evenly? If any of these problems are visible, be sure to contact Fleet Support for guidance. Now you're going to look on the outside of the tire to make sure there are no cuts or bulges. In terms of the rim, no bent rims. It hasn't been welded. There are no unmanufactured holes. For the lug nuts, we use tattletales. If a nut is loosening up, the tattletales would swing out of place and you'd know that you have a nut moving. Without these, you'd be looking for a loose nut or a shiny spot that would indicate movement in the lug nut. Looking at the bearing hub, make sure there are no leaks. There's no oil spray around it. And in some cases, check and make sure the oil is knuckle deep, that it's not overfilled. Look at the serpentine belt. Make sure the tension is right. It's solid, not frayed or cracked. Make sure the fan doesn't have any broken blades. Again, always starting at the top, working your way down. Check the fluids. Check to make sure the radiator coolant is at the maximum cold level before you start the truck in the morning. You're looking for leaks, damage, missing parts. Make sure everything is solid. Make sure all your fluids are up and the valve stem is capped on all sides. Now lower your hood, making sure it's solidly in place and securely latched. Next you want to check your mirrors. Make sure they're not loose and that they're in proper adjustment and clean. As you work your way around, always be checking your lights, your side markers, your turn signals, your indicator lights. Work your way around to the side of the truck. Again, checking your mirrors, making sure they're solid, in place, making sure all your lights continue to work. Check your annual safety sticker to make sure it's up to date. Make sure your door opens and closes properly. Make sure the steps are solid, they're not loose. Check that the fuel cap is on and it's tight. Check your IFTA stickers. Make sure they're current. Lift the storage hatch to make sure you have your fire extinguisher and it's charged and current. Make sure you have your safety triangles in your medical kit. Check the air tank, making sure that you release any moisture in the tanks. Check your air lines and your connection, make sure they're solid that they're free and clear and that they're not scuffed and chafing. Always making sure they're above the catwalk and won't come into contact with any part of the truck. Again, start at the top and work down. So check that the clearance light at the top is operating correctly. Also look for any damage that could interfere with the safe operation of the truck. Have a look at your preventative maintenance sticker to make sure the trailer is not due for preventative maintenance. Check your annual safety sticker on the trailer to make sure it's current. Check the trailer documents and make sure they're current and the safety paperwork matches. If the safety sticker is not current, if it's expired, do not move the trailer. Report it immediately. So continuing, check top to bottom. We're looking for any damage, breaks in the skin, on the side of the van. And on the lower end, we're looking for damage that would have taken the heads off any cross member supports. I'm checking here for the fifth wheel pin to make sure it's in. I'm looking at again my own tires making sure there's no cuts or bulges. The tread is sufficient. With drive tires and trailer tires you need a minimum two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth and you must have more than two treads grooved. If you're flat spotted in any way that's an out of service criteria. In this case the drive tires are equipped with cat's eyes so you can tell they're good because the cat's eyes are closed. However, for you old guys, there's a hammer for you to check and make sure they sound like a properly inflated tire. If you're unsure, use a tire gauge to check inflation. Super single drive tires and super single trailer tires should be inflated to 105 pounds per square inch. 
and normal steers and normal trailer tires are 95 pounds per square inch. Again, we're checking our suspension. Suspension bags should be inflated with no leaks, no audible air. There should be no gap between the fifth wheel and the trailer. And again, we're looking for all our different hangers for the suspension. Make sure there's no missing parts, no brakes, no unmanufactured holes. Checking the brake chambers, making sure they're solid, no audible air. And checking all the shocks, make sure they're not leaking or damaged. Check every tire exactly the same way. Again, coming back to tires, I like to draw a circle. Check the side, check the rim, check the lug nuts, and check the wheel. Mud flaps must be solid, must be in place. Reflective tape is required on the back of the trailer as well as on the back of the tractor. In reference to the landing gear, the landing gear must be solid, nothing bent, nothing loose, nothing damaged. And the handle in transit should be in the holder, but when it's dropped the handle should be left down at the side. I'm checking the cross members to make sure they're solid. And again, I've been looking as I went, I'm looking up and down the van to make sure there's no cuts, no scrapes, no missing rivets. If more than two rivets are missing, the trailer needs to be placed out of surface because they're holding the floor up. The side skirt should be solid. The turn signal should be operating. The air lines must be a minimum 18 inches off the ground, properly secured and no damage. If you have a trailer equipped with suspension dump, such as LC or TRLC, check and make sure that it's in highway mode. The bags are full and the suspension is raised. You can be fined for driving it down the road with the airbags down. I'm also checking the rails to make sure the pins are out and the rail guards are in place. And from this angle I'm checking the tattletales on the brake chamber. The tattletales indicate whether the brakes are in adjustment or not. If they're in the middle, they're in adjustment. If they're at one end, that would tell you that they need to be adjusted. You can do an adjustment from the cab by depressing the brake ten times once you're hooked. And that should adjust the brakes. With the tandems, we're going to look in between to ensure there's nothing lodged in between that could fly out like a rock. The ABS indicator must be working and be clearly marked. As you work your way around the back of the truck, always be on the lookout for damage. Now at the back end, step back. Again, start at the top, work your way down. Make sure the doors are latched shut, like they should be. This trailer happens to be equipped with trailer tails for aerodynamics. You should unlatch and deploy them for all highway use. The hinges in this particular trailer is equipped with nuts. Some have cotter pins. Make sure all cotter pins are intact. After having checked the hinges to make sure they're secure and nothing's broken, damaged or missing, then you would check the top of the door to make sure it's latched properly. You would also check the upper clearance lights to make sure they're all functioning properly. All the reflective tape is in place. And in the case of a loaded trailer, check and make sure the seal is properly in place and not broken or tampered with. Next check the lights, the brake lights, the turn signal, the parking lights. Make sure they're all working properly. Make sure the license plate is in place, fastened solid, and the light is working. Make sure the ICC bar has reflective tape all the way across and it's not damaged. If it's bent, make sure it's not bent more than 6 inches. Now let's move to the other side of the trailer. Same thing here. Start at the top, working your way down. You're making sure there's no damage on the sides, that there are no shaved off rivets. You're checking the mud flaps, tire pressure, tread, rims, lug nuts, wheel bearings, and the capped valve stem. Getting down, make sure that the railings are secure and the pins are in place. And from this angle, checking the suspension bags. Make sure they're up. Make sure there's no breaks or damage or loose parts and that the tattletales indicate the slack adjusters are in good measure. Again, you want to check the cross members, making sure everything's in place, that your turn signals are operation, that there's no fresh damage to be reported and that there's nothing that would be considered an out of service issue. You want to check the landing gear from this side. You want to check the mud flaps, tires, the tread. And from this side, Check your utility box to make sure you have your supply of oil, windshield washer fluid and coolant and that it's secure and that the muffler is secure and solid and not damaged. Again, you want to keep checking all your lighting. You have your backup lights, you have your work lights behind the tractor. Again, you're looking to make sure nothing's broken, nothing's loose. 
Take a look at the APU. At least once a week you should be checking the APU's oil level. Same thing, again, as you make your way back to the front of the truck, make sure everything is solid, clean, the steps aren't loose, the passenger door is functional, because if the door doesn't open, you're out of service. So we've done a complete walk around of the exterior, and all that's left is the in-cab portion of the pre-trip. For the in-cab portion of the inspection, again, we'll start at the top and work our way down. Do you have a clean line of sight out the windshield? Are the fender mirrors clean? We've already checked whether they're stable. Is your dash clear? Any electronics you keep mounted on the windshield can only occupy up to six square inches and they can't be within your line of sight. So as you look forward, are there any electronics such as cameras, GPS units, transponders obstructing your line of sight? They have to be off to the side like this one is. And this one here is set down low. So that's below my line of sight and not interfering with my field of vision. Same thing goes for stickers. No more than six inches above the bottom of the windshield or around the edge of the windshield. Your line of sight must always be kept clear. There also cannot be any cracks across your line of sight. Stone chips can't be any larger than three quarters of an inch and can't be in your line of sight. So you can have a stone chip off to the side as long as it's less than three quarters of an inch but not directly in your line of sight. How about your seat? Is it solid and firmly bolted to the floor or is it loose? If it's loose, have it looked at before heading out. How about your seat belt? Is it anchored properly? Is it frayed? Does it lock properly and securely? The steering wheel. The steering wheel should not have any play and should be locked in place. It should also be in a comfortable driving position so your hands rest comfortably on the wheel. You also need to check that all your gauges are operational. So you'll need to start the truck and wait until all the computers have booted. Then you'll check the oil pressure, the oil temperature, the water temperature, the transmission temperature. Is the tachometer operational? The speedometer must be operational. The amp meter. Check the two air tanks. Is the pressure where it should be? And of course the fuel tank. All your gauges must be operational. You'll want to check both your turn signals left and right and make sure they're working. Your four ways. Is your climate control system working? Is the defroster working? The defroster has to be working or it's an out of service. You cannot drive the truck if you can't clear your windows. So I'm checking all of those functions. Do your lights work? Your windshield wipers? Check that your washer fluid works. Check the city horn. The air horn. It must be operational. Once those are all checked, then you'll want to check the air pressure of your brakes. With the engine running, with the engine running, you're going to test your low air pressure warning. To do that, you need to bring the pressure up above 90 PSI, and then you'll turn off the engine. Next, repeatedly apply the brakes until you engage the alarm. So just as it got to 50 PSI is when I got an air warning from tank 1, and shortly after, tank 2. So they activated above 55 PSI, and that's a pass. Had they not activated until below 55 PSI, that would have been a fail. Now you're going to watch for the buildup. You're going to bring the RPM up and bring the air pressure up to 90 PSI. It should take less than two minutes to build the air back up to 85 PSI. Actually 100 PSI is the legal limit. So there you go, in less than a minute my pressure was built back up to where it needed to be. So this truck passes the air pressure buildup test. As a note, if it takes longer than two minutes to build the pressure back up, it's a fail. We'll now perform the governor cut in and cut out test, starting with the cut out. What you need to do first is lower the air pressure below 80 PSI. The governor cuts in the air pressure and starts building the air pressure back up. So what you need to do is listen to see when the governor cuts out the compressor. You don't need to build up too much pressure so to pass, the compressor needs to kick out by 135 PSI. If it doesn't kick out before or at 135 PSI, that would be an out of service and it needs to be looked at. But you'll hear it audibly when the governor kicks out the air compressor. After the cutout test, next is the air loss test. So I now have over 100 PSI of pressure. I'm going to shut off the engine. For our international trucks, 
you'll need the ignition in the on position for the gauges to work. You'll then apply the foot brake and note the change in pressure over one minute. You cannot lose more than 3 PSI for a tractor only and no more than 4 PSI for a tractor trailer combination. To test the trailer spring brakes, you'll first engage the spring brakes on the trailer and disengage the truck air brakes. You'll then need to perform a tug test against the spring brakes. At Crisco, we use automatic slack adjusters on all our equipment. It's important for you to check the adjustment to ensure the brakes are within tolerance. If you're out on the road and you find the brakes are out of adjustment, you can bring the brakes back into adjustment by simply applying full brake application 10 or more times while sitting stationary. My last check before I start the exterior portion of my pre-trip is the tractor protection valve. Start by disconnecting the blue tractor trailer service line. After you climb into the cab, apply the service brakes and listen for air exhausting from the trailer service line with the trailer supply valve closed. If air is exhausting from the trailer service line, the tractor protection valve is defective and that would be an out of service. If for some reason your truck loses connection to the trailer, the tractor protection valve will activate and stops the truck from losing air.